Do you want to know how a DIYer applies their skills to renovating a narrowboat? Have you ever wanted to build a shed from scratch but don't know where to start? Would you like to see what happens when van life enthusiasts gather together for a festival? On the latest episode of Evolution Power Tools TV, we'll be showing you the fun side of DIY. You're right everyone, my name's Joe from Average Joe's Joinery and I'm excited to introduce to you a brand new episode of Evolution Power Tools TV, a monthly show dedicated to bringing you inspirational stories, DIY guides and tips and tricks to make you a better maker. We are continuing to post a new episode of Evolution Power Tools TV every month so make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn that bell notification on to guarantee you never miss an episode. Okay, let's see what we've got coming up in the show. First up, Vicky will be showing us around her narrowboat and explaining some of the DIY work she's undertaken. Make sure you click the link in the description to watch Vicky's guide to building a shed from scratch. Next, Adam will take us on a trip to the 2022 Van Life Festival. He'll introduce us to some of the attendees and what they've done to revamp their campers. After that, Vicky is back again to speak to our special guest. On this episode, she'll be having a chat with Rada Sevilla, who, as well as being a very talented woodworker and furniture maker, was a fellow contestant of mine on the Channel 4 TV show, Britain's Best Woodworker. I'm really looking forward to getting to see what Rada has been up to. Then we'll be kicking off our short series of three build guides. I've created a how-to video on making a garden planter and we'll be showing you some of that later on. If you can't wait to see the guide, simply click the link in the description to go through to the Evolution Power Tools website. Finally, it's competition time. Okay, so now you've seen what's coming up in the show, let's get started. Here's Vicky to show us her DIY projects. Hello, today I'm going to show you a project I'll be working on but first, let me give you a tour of our temporary home, which is this narrow boat. Me and my husband wanted to try narrow boat life for quite a while. So when we got married, we decided to have a honeymoon on one, see what it was really like. But it's been a great experience just waking up to a gorgeous view. It feels like wild camping. The great thing about having a narrow boat is you've got so much freedom when it comes to DIY. There's loads of little jobs you can do. You can do the layout to how you want it and it can be really cheap living. So since we got the boat, the first thing I noticed was the leaking sinks in the kitchen and the bathroom and I just couldn't have that. So I wanted to sort that out. I had a leaky tap in the bathroom and then I started doing things like repairing the sink and then I needed to restore the wooden kitchen worktops. It was really, really dull and there was a join that I needed to glue up. And then I decided to do a drop down desk for my husband because we wanted to be on here for a few months at a time. That also meant that we needed good internet. So we decided to thread through behind the panel some cables for a modem router, if you like, at the, at the top that's on a mast. You are constantly doing repairs, but it is a great lifestyle to just to wake up and, and get this view. So this morning I've got a repair to do on the dinette table, the trim's missing, and that needs to turn into a bed, so that's important to fix. And then I'm gonna head to my dad's wood yard because I'm gonna build a custom shed down there because he's got a backlog of orders and he needs my help. here at my dad's wood yard because I'm helping him build a custom shed for one of his customers. So let's get cracking. So down at the wood yard, they build sheds, fencing, decking, gates, lots of things in between, even rabbit hutches. There's so many rooms to this place. It's a maze and it's amalgamated over the years. And back there it seems to be turning into my room where I build small sheds or that's where they do rabbit hutches and more tongue and groove storage. 
As far as I'm aware, my granddad started this place in the 60s, but all I've got is hearsay and fragmented stories from family members and friends. So I want to find out the real truth, and I think the perfect person to ask is a long-standing customer of my dad's. So I'm here with George Allen, and quite often when I come down to the woodyard, this face is here, and you don't realise how much the woodyard has been part of the community. So, hi George. Hello, Lucky. I believe you know a lot more about the woodyard than I do. Yes. So I should imagine I do. Yeah. <laughs> Doing sheds and fencing has made this place where it is. Your dad built it up. He started selling sheds, he started selling fencing, and people started coming to the yard. And yard then took off. When abouts was that? I'm guessing the 70s. Yeah, it'll be early 70s. People started then coming here and using this as a community base. My mum said there's regulars that come every day or every other day just to have a chat. Do you think it is like a men's shed organisation sort of thing? Because there's a few charities like that around and they go there to hang out. Do this you think is, it is that? This, this is the original one. This is, really? this, is what, this is the one what before men's sheds were about. Yeah, People yeah. come here for, for a variety of reasons. So I'm here with Paul, the customer of my shed. Paul, please tell me it's looking all right. Yeah, it's looking absolutely <laughs> fab, actually. I uh, really like the, the finish on it, and uh, I love how you've got the beading around the top and what have you. So uh, absolutely perfect, yeah, great. Great. Does it meet your specifications? Yeah, it does, because I've only got a small spot down the side of the garage and what have you. Can't get anything big in there, and it's really just for all the gardening tools and what have you, because I can't get the car and the gardening tools in the sheds as well. So, um, yeah, it'll be absolutely perfect. Brilliant. Thanks so much for watching. If you want to see the full guide on how I built this shed, you can find the link in the description now. Make sure you click the link in the description to go through to the Evolution Power Tools website. You'll not only find Vicky's guide to building a shed from scratch, but you'll also find much more great content from everyone featured in this episode. Thanks Vicky, it was great to see how you've made improvements to your narrowboat and that shed looks amazing. If you want to see Vicky's full guide to building the shed, the link's in the description. Later in the show, I'll be revealing who's won last month's competitions and I'll be telling you how you could win an LG 32-inch smart LED TV or a ring indoor camera. Keep watching Evolution Power Tools TV for your chance to win. Before we move on to our next feature, now's a good time to take a look at what you guys have been doing this month. Chris has made this brilliant log store for his garden out of reclaimed pallet wood. What a great project. Well done, Chris. Rachel has made this stool from a log that she's cut in half, removed the bark and turned and attached four legs. Really nice work there, Rachel. Take a look at Ian's man cave. This is an amazing project that's come along really well. Keep us updated with your progress, Ian. Yana has made some floating shells for a plant out of reclaimed pallet wood. Really nice work there, Yana. Make sure that you tag us in all of your project videos. We absolutely love seeing what you guys are getting up to. Now it's time to see what happens when van life enthusiasts get together. Adam has been along to the 2022 Van Life Festival. Let's take a look how it went. We're here at Van Life Fest at Scampston Hall in North Yorkshire. It's a three day event where you'll see some of the UK's best custom campers. We're here to check out the event, meet the attendees and see what they've done to their vans. Let's go take a look and see. Tell me a little bit about your van. Okay, so it's a 2013 Sprinter, uh, long wheelbase and it's a high top as well. We went for that because we wanted to get the fixed bed in the back, so it gives us more space. Yeah, we used... We're getting a bit older, so we need the comfort. <laughs> 
Out of the bits you built, what was the most challenging part of Well, it's still the challenge, the, the, the electrics. We've got a 200 amp hour leisure battery. We've got 200 watts of solar on the roof and we've got a 16,000 watt inverter and we thought that sounds like enough. But we're struggling to cook, aren't we? Uh, we've got an induction cooktop. It works for five minutes, then stops. So I don't, I don't know what we need. Whether we need more solar, whether we need an, another yeah. leisure battery. Now a bit about van life fest. What have you enjoyed about the weekend? I think for me, it's the chilled atmosphere, isn't it? You know, you, we've, you meet so many different people. People just want to talk about their vans and look at our van, and it's yeah. just a nice, nice atmosphere, isn't it? Okay, thank you Tony for talking to us today. Tell me a little bit about your van. Well, we actually bought it fully equipped and then we had it weighed and it was a bit heavy. It used to have a walk here and a full shower and it had a stone resin shower tray in it and just... So I thought, right, I gutted it. <laughs> Rather than one leisure battery, I put four leisure batteries in there, changed all the electrics to the back, lots of painting, lots of decorating, and basically just rewired the whole lot so that we've got right. enough power to be off-grid for about six days. Brilliant. Oh, you're so. obviously pretty skilled then to have done all that. Well, I'm a wall and floor tile of a trade and I've been all my life. Everything I've done there was new to me, so it was like, yeah, a challenge, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah. So is the plan to live in the van longer term or...? No. Ideally what we'd do is travel around England, Scotland, Wales for a couple of years. We've got some kids that need to finish uni and stuff like that. Cool. Then when we're done is sell up, go travelling. Brilliant. And have you enjoyed the festival this weekend? Oh, it's been amazing. Absolutely amazing. Never been to one before. Everybody is so friendly. We've had a walk around. Everybody's willing to show us their vans and you pick up some ideas. We've had loads of people come visit us. We're here with Mark and he's going to talk to us about his 1965 split screen. So to start off with, tell me how long you've had it, please. I've had it three years. And what sort of condition was it in when you bought it? It was very, very ropey. Very, very yeah, you needed probably 12 inches of new metal all the way around it and with half foot floors. Tell us a bit more about modifications to the engine. It's got a 1776 cc engine that's been stroked into 1955, twin 46 Webers, uh, high lift cam, so it's kind of, it's a nippy engine. It's a real head turner. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Got a lot of attention at the show? Yeah, it gets quite a bit of attention pretty much kind of everywhere it goes, so it's quite a nice. My missus don't like it because she don't like people staring, but <laughs> I do. And what was the most challenging part, would you say? The windows are a nightmare. There's that many rubber seals. So the, the side door windows, the, I, did, I can't say I enjoyed doing it. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to do it again, but you know, it's You've done it, in though. the pudding, it's done. Yeah, absolutely. I'm glad I did it. Yeah, yeah, yeah well, I'm it shows, it. It's, it's great. Mm -hmm. Tell us why you went for this paint job. I think we've seen lots of vans with Star Wars, Marvel, those sorts of things, and we just fancied something different. At the time when we first had it started, Stranger Things was quite new. Just something a bit different, really. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, it's cool. And tell me about the actual internals of the camper. Well, I've built a couple of camper vans before, and the last one I did was quite out of heavy material, so we've used the lightweight plywood, the 15mm, which we got from a local camper converters yeah. and I just basically made it at home, really. So you've done it yourself? I've done it myself, yeah. Excellent. Homeschooled, cool. yeah. Gotcha. yeah. And so, where's your favourite place you've been? It's got to be St Ives. St oh, Ives cool. is one of his favourite places. Have you had a lot of attention this weekend? It's been it's been quite an eye-opener considering how many people do, do or don't like Stranger Things. You yes. know, one of the questions we get asked is, what is it? What's Stranger uh, Things? Yeah. All the other thing is, is, is it a wrap? Yeah. And is it, you know, it's not, it's airbrushed, but it, we had it on show down with everybody else's vans yesterday and the attention it got was amazing. It was Brilliant. really chuffed with it. We've had a great day here at Van Life Fest. It's been a lot of fun to see all the custom campers. If you'd like to see more from the festival, click through to see the full video now. Make sure you click the links in the description to go through to the Evolution Power Tools website. You'll not only find a more in-depth video about Van Life Festival, but you'll also find much more great content from everyone featured in this episode. Thanks Adam, it was really great to see all of those people with a real passion for DIY and van life. If you want to see more from Adam and the festival, click the link in the description now. Before we meet this month's guest, you guys have been sending in your DIY tips. Let's take a look.
if you have an awkward area that you need to find the shape of, use paper to cut out the shape and then you'll be able to lay it on top of your material and cut around it. Always tidy up your workspace. It's a bit of a mess in here at the moment, but I'm going to tidy up before I do any more work. Preparation is key, so when it comes to doing flooring, making sure you've got the correct sub base. When it comes to painting, make sure you do the right amount of sanding. Always use cling film for your brushes and tin foils for your trays. It'll help you when washing up. If you've got a hole to fill, all you need is some wood glue, some sawdust. Mix it up into a paste and then put it over the hole until it's full. Let it dry, sand it down and then you're done. Huge thanks to everyone for giving us your DIY tips. If you'd like to get involved, all you have to do is make a video of yourself telling us your top five DIY tips. Just tag us in the video and you could be featured on our next episode. If your video is featured, we'll send you a brand new Evolution mitre saw, so make sure you get involved. Right, it's time to meet our guest maker. He's a bespoke furniture maker with a passion for all things making. His incredible creativity and talent for woodworking have led him to produce some stunning pieces for some very grateful customers. You may know him as a finalist on the Channel 4 show, Britain's Best Woodworker, where he was a fellow contestant of our very own Joe Whittaker. It's TV's Rada Sivia. So thanks for joining us, Rada. Now, I tell you, I was really impressed by all of the work that you did on Britain's Best Woodworker. It was impressive. And dare I ask, how old are you? And I'm not letting you ask me that though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so thanks for having me on. Um, I'm 25 years old. I've been woodworking for actually to this year is my 10th year of woodworking and yeah I've got this weird obsession with detail and I think that's where I had a lot of challenges on uh, Britain's Best Woodworker is because I just want to invest hours into a nice little joint that no one will ever see. Are you always good at everything that you pick up and do? Well thank you very much <laughs> I, I'm really really not and all that energy I mean my poor mum, single mum, and there's three of us with just as much energy all running around the house <laughs> yeah. and fighting. But uh, yeah, lots of energy from the Sylvia family. Did she find you a handful then growing up? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Especially me and my older brother, we would, we would really clash. Yeah, so my uncle is also a fine woodworker. And so he pulled me into the workshop when, when we were really young. So talk to me about your favourite piece that you've done. I think my favourite piece has probably been my most recent one, which was making this large Japanese style cabinet and the challenge with it was I decided that I wanted to make it completely using Japanese joinery. That was really interesting. I mean, I did like these really tall, almost six foot tall Kumiko panels. So probably like many others, I watched all of uh, Britain's Best Woodworking. But tell people at home, for the people that don't know, what was the show about and how did you become a contestant on it? Yeah, so, so the show is similar to the Great British Bake Off where essentially you take nine contestants and you go through a series of challenges where each week then we'll have a big build, we'll decide whether you're eliminated from the show or you, or you follow through. But I thought you were brilliant on it anyway. Oh, thank you I'm very glad much. you applied. And of course, I also knew of you through Joe, our very own average Joe, who's happens to be here today. Yeah. Hi, <laughs> oh, how you doing? All right, mate. All right, man. Long time. How you doing? Nice to see you. Tell you what, I'll grab a stool a sec. Yeah, go on. I'll, I'll... Oh, look at this. This is all right. All right, right. check Pro it out. Proper join around this one, mate. <laughs> Teacher a thing or two. <laughs> You know what, actually, so, so my girlfriend Varsha is not into woodworking at all. And it was only when she started seeing this show on YouTube and she went, oh, you know what, maybe I'll try doing some woodworking. And she saw one of your projects. I was like, I do woodworking. I live with you. And she's like, nah, not interested in that. This is what I'm after. Inspiring the nation. <laughs> so how did you become friends then on the show? So... Uh, the way that the, the way that the show was set up is it was during COVID and so we all had to lock down and so we all had these little pods that your bed was in there, your shower, your toilet and it was all little individual pods and Joe just so happened to be my neighbour and, and that's where it started, right? It was because we was for seven days we couldn't really leave so we had to stop in these little, there was shipping containers really, wasn't yeah. there? And they'd bring the food to the door, but then when we could venture out, meet up, go and get food and stuff. Rada, far more into his exercise than I am, <laughs> he brought a bike with him so he could like bike around a little bit. So I'd be sat with the door open, it's like, 
quite hot weather and I'd just see him go past and then he'd, he'd go past again and he'd, he'd go past again. <laughs> that was, that's how I was getting all my exercise. What's wrong with walking? <laughs> I was obsessed, I was obsessed. I needed to move, I was in this little pod. What was it like behind the scenes? Have you got any gossip to tell us? And, and what, was, what was it like as a typical day there? Yeah, so, I mean, it was it was intense. It was definitely intense, but we were actually filming it in really intensive blocks. So it would generally be 12 to 14 hours a day. Wow. We'd be like locked into the workshop, you know, mic'd up and ready to go at all times at 110% constantly. Um, the cameras on um, zip wires and things, just like, that must have been really distracting. <laughs> yeah. Woo! It was the tellure as well, which would make it worse. So it'd be like, okay, we're going to have the GoPro go down the middle. Nobody look at it. <laughs> so of course then everybody looks at it. So the amount of times they'd redo that because somebody looked. So yeah. We had that. yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the cameras is something that you're not used to in your own workshop. I mean, on the show, if you made a mistake, you'd very quickly learn not to vocalise that because you're always mic'd up. As soon as you go, oh no, you'd have six huge cameras, really? cameramen running over. What have you done wrong? Like, Tell us what you've done wrong. It's like, come on. It's like, oh man. So yeah, you very quickly learn to just be like, oh nice, I really made a massive mistake here, yeah. but it's all good. Like, it's all right. Don't show the cameras. I think just overall, the atmosphere in the workshop was actually really nice. Like you'd expect it to be chaos at all times, but I think all of us are really understanding. We're all just like, oh yeah, like you should try this joint and you should like attach it using this and this. And we're like giving each other advice yeah, yeah. to the point where the producers will have to go over and be like, it's a competition. Yeah. Stop helping each other. What's going on? They probably do, don't do that on Bake Off, do they? <laughs> no. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Rada. Joe, I think you best get back to uh, the studio. I think I will do. It's been great catching up with you, mate, honestly. You too, man. Good to see you. And if you want to find out more about Rada, you can click the link in the description, and I'll see you next time. Thanks, Vicky. It was brilliant to catch up with Rada again. If you want to see more from Rada, check the links in the description. Now it's time to launch our three-part series of maker guides. Over the coming episodes, we'll be introducing a guide to a simple woodworking project that you can follow along at home. These projects will be a planter for the garden, a bar stool and a rocking horse. Let's take a look at the first one. I'm going to show you how to make this very simple DIY tiered planter using just a few tools from the Evolution Power Tools cordless family. This planter is a great beginner woodworking project because you can make it from scraps or with wood from your local DIY store. It'll look fantastic in your garden when it's filled up with spring flowers. You really can use a variety of materials on this project. Any old wood you got lying around will work great. Old pallets, even old decking is a good option. But to keep things simple, we're gonna be using some wood that we brought from our local DIY store. The first step in our project is to get all the pieces cut to length. Now you can adjust the lengths to suit your needs, but I'm going to keep it simple and follow the cutting list. I'm going to start with the 150mm wide boards. I need nine pieces cut to 300mm long, but I'm only going to measure and mark one of those lengths. I can then get it cut on the mitre saw and use that piece that we've got cut to mark all the other pieces. Right, so next we're going to be cutting the legs and I'm going to be using the 50mm by 47mm wide boards. I'm going to start with the two shorter legs and those measure 250mm long. So I'm going to measure and mark for 250mm. We can get that cut on the mitre saw. Again, I'm just going to measure and mark the first one, get it cut and then use it to mark the second. Right, so now we've got all the pieces cut, it's time for construction. For the first box, I'm going to be using two of the 128mm long pieces. Those are going to form the outsides to the box. I'm also going to be using three of the 300mm long pieces. Those will form the bottom and the two longer sides to the box. For the construction, it couldn't be simpler. I'm going to be using 50mm nails, some exterior wood glue and a hammer. So 
So with the three boxes constructed, it's time to move on to the legs. And I'm gonna start with the two shorter legs that I'm at 250 millimeters long. I'm only gonna need one of the boxes. So I'm gonna put two to one side. We can just concentrate on this one for now. These two legs, I'm gonna get attached to the one side of the box, but we need it so the top of the legs is flush with the top of the planter. It should be nice and flush like that. To secure it in place, I'm gonna be using 50 millimeter screws. And I'll just be driving those in with a combi drill. We've finally got a planter that stands up. Now, we can bring in the other planter boxes and get those attached to the sides. Right, we can leave this to dry now, then when it's dry we can come back, get it flipped over and get some nice plants added. And here is the finished planter. I think you'll agree, a very simple project and one that's ideal for a beginner woodworker. The materials are easily available and it doesn't cost a fortune to make. It uses minimal tools and can be made in a couple of hours so it's an ideal weekend project. Make sure you click the links in the description to go through to the Evolution Power Tools website. You'll not only find my full guide to making a planter but you'll also find much more great content from everyone featured in this episode. I really hope that introduction to the planter build has inspired you to want to see more. If you'd ask, click the link in the description to see the full video. And remember, in the next episode, I'll show you how to make a bar stool. And in the one after that, a rocking horse. Thanks, Joe. Hi, guys. I'm back to announce the winners of last episode's competitions and tell you how you can win some brilliant prizes. I'm Ruth from Kids Invent Stuff and I'll be your guest presenter for competitions this month. Megan is away so it'll be my job to let you know how the customer service team have been helping people this month. I'll also be letting you know which of you has won our picture competition and will be enjoying their prize of an Amazon Fire Stick. I'll also be announcing the winners of last episode's big competition that has a grand prize of a Sonos Ray compact soundbar. Make sure you stick around as later on I'll be telling you how you can win a Ring indoor camera for taking part in our picture competition. We'll also be giving away an LG 32 inch smart LED TV and all you have to do is answer a very simple question. Before we get on to the competitions, I just want to tell you a bit about some of the conversations the customer service team have been having this month. Claire got in touch via email to ask us for help with assembling her R210 SMS Mitosaur. Our customer service operatives were able to link her to our video assembly guide on our website. Claire was delighted with the help she received. Terry contacted us via the live chat on our website as he was having trouble with the alignment of the laser light on his mitre saw. We collected his saw and our workshop was able to quickly identify the issue, fix it and return it under warranty. Terry was very happy with the quick turnaround. Chris called us to ask about spare parts for his table saw. We're able to direct him to the spare parts list on the Evolution Power Tools website where Chris could easily identify and order the spare parts he needed. Chris then got back in touch via email to thank us for our customer service. If you need any information about Evolution Power Tools products or any support with your purchases, our customer service and technical support team are on hand 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday to Friday. Right, let's get on to the competitions. You guys have been sending in pictures of the things you've been making and they're all looking really good. Let's have a look at some of them. Tom has made these custom shelves for his garage. 
What a great way to get more storage space. Such a brilliant project. Chris has made this rabbit run for his garden. This is a really nice project. Steve has made this potting table for his wife. What a brilliant present and a really great build. Michael has made this reindeer ornament out of oak. He used a bandsaw for a compound cut and finished it with some beeswax. Al has made these two play tables for his two boys. One table is for water and the other for sand. What a lovely job. All of your pictures have been great, but only one of you has won the competition and the Amazon Fire Stick. I'm very pleased to announce that our winner is Steve for his picture of his potting table. Great work, Steve. Your prize is on its way to you now. Next month for our October 2022 episode, we'll be giving away a Ring indoor camera as our picture competition prize. Bring protection inside with this mini marvel that packs a powerful punch. Ring indoor camera is your solution to quickly check what's happening at your home right from your phone or tablet. If you want to take part in our picture competition, all you have to do is post a picture on Instagram of something that you have made recently. Make sure you use the hashtag EvolutionTVWin or your picture may be missed. You can even just tag us in a picture that you've already uploaded. It doesn't have to be something new. Just add the hashtag to your existing picture to enter. In our last episode, we gave away Apple AirTags as our picture competition prize. Congratulations again to Laura, who won with her picture of her custom summer house project. Remember, if you're watching this after October 2022, the competition will be closed. You can, however, still take part. Click the competition link in the description to see the latest prizes. Right, in our last episode, you took part in our big competition to win a Sonus Ray compact soundbar. All you had to do was answer A, B or C to this simple question. Which product did Lee talk about in his technical feature? Was it A, a cordless mitosaur, B, a cordless jigsaw, or C, a cordless reciprocating saw? The answer is of course C, a cordless reciprocating saw. Well done Piers for getting the correct answer. Your Sonus Ray Compact Soundbar Prize is on its way to you. If you want to be a big winner, just like Piers, stick around for this month's grand prize competition. Speaking of which, in our last episode, we gave away a two night boutique hotel stay for two. Congratulations to Lloyd for being a big prize winner. He sent in a little video to show us his prize. Hi, I'd just like to say a massive thank you to Evolution Power Tools for my prize, a two night stay at a boutique hotel. Cheers. Thanks Lloyd, I hope you enjoy your prize. For next month's big competition, you could be in with a chance of winning an LG 32 inch smart LED TV worth 269 pounds and 99 pence. All you have to do is answer the following very simple question. Earlier in the episode, Vicky showed us around her current home. The question is, where does Vicky live at the moment? Is it A, a house, B, a narrow boat, or C, a camper van? Click the competition link in the description to answer the question. We'll then choose a winner at random from all the correct entries and announce who's won in the next episode. Remember that if you're watching this after October 2022, the competition will no longer be active, but you can still click the link to see the latest question and prize. Before I go, I have even more Evolution products to give away. So to win yourself an Evolution Mitosaur, click through to the competitions page to find out what you need to do. Okay, that's it for the competitions this month. Make sure you click on the link in the description to take part in all the competitions and win some great prizes. See you next time. Right, that's it for today's episode. I really hope that you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notification bell so that you never miss an upcoming episode. Please comment below if you have any questions, suggestions or ideas for content and make sure you come back next time for more great inspirational stories. Thanks a lot for staying with me and I hope you've enjoyed the show. That's it from me, catch you again on the next one.